Uh, now let's introduce the speaker, Le Peng Zhou. Uh, Le Peng Zhou received his master's degree in control engineering from Nanjing University of Posts and uh, Telecommunications in 2018. Now he's a PhD student with the Department of Control Science and Engineering in Tongji University at Shanghai. His research interests include robust control for diagnosis, for torrent control, and their applications. Uh, okay, the poem, please give your presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, my presentation uh, is entitled as an interval observer based anti disturbance control strategy for rigid sites. Uh, this presentation involves two parts. Uh, one is. Uh, excuse me, interval. Huh? Excuse me, uh, could you please make it uh, full screen? Okay. Yeah, now it's entering the full screen. Can I go ahead? Uh, uh, Andres, could, could you see okay. the bookmark? Uh at least I don't see the full screen mode at the moment. Yes. I guess you need uh, to change the window. Yeah. I have entering the um, full Maybe screen. You can no. close the bookmarks on the left. Um, mm. On an English keyboard, it's control L, the full screen mode. Yes. Okay. Control, I, I use control L, but it. Uh... Okay, okay. Now entering the uh, full screen mode. Yep. Okay. Please try. Uh, okay, please go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, my presentation is entitled I, as an interval observer based anti disturbance control strategy for rigid satellite. Uh, from this title, we can notice that. Our research uh, involves two parts. Uh, one is interval observer based disturbance reconstruction. The, an, the another one is a uh, sliding mode based anti disturbance control strategy. Uh, before go ahead, uh, I want to present you the outline of this presentation. Uh, first is model and target, the second is uh, the main work. I mentioned before, the third part is simulation. Uh, sorry, sorry, Zapon. I, huh? I can only see the first page. Hmm? I can only see the, the first oh, page. Okay. Maybe leave the full screen mode. I guess you will see. I, I found it that uh, when I entering uh, full screen mode, the frame cannot be continued, uh, you see. Uh, maybe you uh, do not use the full screen mode and just show us the slides. Yeah, yes, it works. Uh, it works. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, the outline of my presentation involves two, three sections, model and target. Uh, main work involves disturbance reconstruction, PVC controller, yes. and the third part is no, simulation. I can use, a, I can use my account. Yeah. Hmm? I think so. Uh, uh, firstly, the rigid satellite attitude system is described by MRPS and equation 1.1 is a kinematic equation and equation 1.2 is a dynamic equation. Uh, we can notice that the ex external disturbance appears in the dynamic equation and it is bounded. Mm, we assume that uh, it satisfies this condition, and uh, d minus and d plus are two known vectors. And this condition is used to construct an uh, interval observer for the um, variable in the dynamic equation. And uh, our research control targets uh, involves two aspects. One is designing an uh, interval observer-based disturbance reconstruction strategy. The second is based on 
uh, the backstabbing control framework, developing an integral sliding mode controller. And, and before going to the detailed mathematical calculation or the detailed research, I want to present you the system block first. And uh, based on the backstabbing control framework, I separate the system into two layers, and namely outer loop and the inner loop. Each loop uh, address different problems. For the outer loop, uh, we address the constraint output problem. And for the inner loop, uh, we proposed the sliding mode controller. And the disturbance reconstruction is also uh, addressed here. Um, for the disturbance reconstruction, we firstly proposed the following uh, interval observer set for the dynamic uh, equation in equation 1.2. And um, hat bar omega and uh, hat underline omega are the interval estimations for the dynamic variable omega. It's a natural sense that um, omega can be um, expressed by its interval estimation results. Then we have the equation 2.3. And we can notice that this capital, this capital omega is a gain and all its elements satisfies uh, from, the, uh, it, all its elements varies from zero to y. Um, by um, differentiating- Maybe, a, excuse me, uh, may I briefly interrupt you on this slide number seven? I think this might be of interest for the audience also to follow uh, the presentation. What is this variable omega star that you have? What's the meaning of this? Uh, capital omega, you mean? No, there's uh, in the first line, in the first equation, you have uh, the inverse of a matrix J times some omega star. What is omega star? Uh, omi omega star. Yes, with this omega, uh, or, or some, cr some cross. Is this a multiplication or? Uh, yes. cross uh, omega product? times. Omega times. Okay. Okay, that's a cross. Omega product. times uh, is a uh, scroll matrix uh, and uh, the detailed form is uh, presented in my um, in my paper. Uh, okay. it, it, it doesn't um, affect the conclusion we I, I will present you. Okay, thanks. Uh, you can you can treat this as the uh, um, should uh, we usually address address the control problem for uh, dot x equals fx plus uh, bu and uh, this term can be treated as fx. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, can I move on? Please go uh, ahead. Everyone can interrupt me when you uh, when you have questions uh, in, uh, on my uh, re relations or some um, expressions. You can you can interrupt me at any time you want. Okay, um, by differentiating um, equation 2.3 and uh, integrating um, 2.1 and 2.2, we can conclude that D can be expressed by this formula. And uh, these formulas are constructed by the interval observer gain, error, and um, this, this, uh, this uh, these variables um inverse j plus and the inverse j minus are the uh, are also designed as um in my in my paper uh, it, it it calculate as um inverse uh how do i express this mm. Uh, can I can I show you my paper? Yes, if if you want, please do so. Okay. Uh, 
It make it mix up. Um, I my first goal is to um, introduce my research, and then we can discuss the details. Okay, and uh, oh, D is uh, D is um, calculated by this formula, and we can uh, obtain the reconstructed disturbance by this formula, and uh, we can notice that we use the um, derivation of capital omega. So we introduce Lavent differentiator to calculate this, and the Q1 is then um, transformed into this one. And uh, this, uh, this hat uh, dot capital omega is the output of the Lavent differentiator with the input of uh, dot capital omega, uh, uh, with, the, with the input of capital omega. And then D is uh, modified into the following form, Q1 is now replaced by hat Q1, and the hat Q1 is only changed here. We use capital, uh, we use hat dot capital omega to replace uh, dot capital omega. Um, the algorithm for the disturbance reconstruction can be stepped in, uh, can be lumped as three steps. One is designing an interval observer for omega. And the second is constructing the relationship between the omega and its uh, interval estimations. The third one is uh, the disturbance reconstruction equation. D can be calculated by this formula. There are three merits for this reconstruction method. The first one different Selections of D minus and D plus will almost will produce almost the same disturbance reconstruction result. The second one is the control input is decoupled from the expression of D. Uh, that leaves a large space for designers to construct different control strategies. Uh, the third one is the reconstruction can be obtained within a finite time. Uh, that is um, guaranteed by the Levent uh, estimation property. Uh, after getting the external disturbance, uh, we constructed the PVC-based uh, sliding mode controller. The PVC stands for prescribed performance control. Uh, it usually have the two objectives the first one is the transient response is bounded by a preset boundary pair. The second is the steady state response will not violate the boundary set. Uh, all these two objects can be expressed by this inequality. Uh, namely, mm, the tracking error cannot exceed the upper bound and its lower bound. Um, by importing S5 function, this inequality can be transformed into an unconstrained one. Then the constraint output problem is transformed into the stability problem of phi. Um, for the outer loop, uh, we construct the integral terminal sliding mode for sliding mode surface for phi and uh, and the reason we use this uh, integral terminal sliding mode service is to um, import the finite convergent, convergent properties of the terminal sliding mode service. And due to the implement of the backstepping control framework and the command filter, the compensated tracking error y is given like this way uh, by constructing the proper Lyapunov function and some ca mathematical calculations, the virtual controller omega d is chosen like this. And for zeta, it's governed by these dynamic processes. Uh, for inner loop, another terminal sliding mode service is chosen like S e. Uh, then by the same uh, Lyapunov function deduction, we can conceive the following finite time controller. Uh, one 
one mer uh, one highlight here is the uh, construction of chi, and uh, the variable chi uh, imported here is to address the coupling problem between the outer and the inner loop. Uh, after we construct the whole control strategy, the simulation um, results will be revealed here. And some key parameters are given as uh, given below. And D is in this form. And the parameters of the interval observer is here um, to validate the expression that we um, different D minus and D plus will result in almost the same reconstruction result. And two cases are given here, and we can notice that D minus and the D plus are chosen in different scales. Um, firstly, we given the interval estimation here, and from the left side, we can notice that different selections for D minus and D plus do result in different interval estimations. And uh, the bigger D minus and the D plus are, the thicker the interval will be. Uh, as for the disturbance reconstruction result, we can notice that for both case one and the case two, the disturbance reconstruction can track the original signal ideally from the right si uh, left side figures. For the right side figures, we can notice that um, for both case one and case two, the reconstructed signal can track the original signal swiftly. Uh, all these uh, tracking process are completed within one second. You can notice that here and here and here. Uh, actually, uh, different selections for D minus and T plus uh, will result in almost the same construct reconstruction result. Uh, and we can notice that um, for case one and case two, there are indeed a slightly, exists a slightly differences for the reconstruction error. And uh, we uh, examine, uh, we, we uh, zoom the scale of the time and we can notice that uh, these two, these two uh, reconstructing error curves are not in the same one. So, uh, so we can conclude that different selections for D minus and the D plus uh, can result in almost the same reconstructing result, not the same reconstructing result. Um, as for the uh, tracking error, uh, we can notice that uh, it is all, it is um, bounded by its uh, upper boundary and uh, lower boundary. In this research, our boundary are set with red lines, and we can notice that uh, sigma one with red uh, blue line are all, blue lines are all bounded within these intervals. And uh, the green lines and the dark lines are the comparison from the uh, compared references. And uh, we can notice that the um, this, this notion, um, PPC controlled method have, have some relations with the interval method. Uh, what I didn't uh, present you in the, this presentation is that uh, we also combine the we also combine the equation two two point three this this notion into the PPC controller uh, strategy design that is the method we are under we 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 sub, have submitted so I I didn't. So I didn't uh, put this notion here, and I just express this uh, to share with you. So, uh, in, uh, in other words, uh, PPC control strategy can in 
can be combined with interval estimation methods. That's that's I wanna add it. So thank you for your attention. That's all the research work. Uh, anyone has some questions? Yes, I'm definitely sure that there will be some questions. Maybe at the beginning, let me start a little bit with questions. Okay. Uh, could you go back to the slide number three at the beginning? Number three. Yes, because I'm a little bit curious about the system modeling. Okay. Uh, your assumption uh, is that you're, at least as far as I understood it, uh, the only uncertain parameter is the quantity D in the equation 1.2. Uh, and that means that some kind of disturbance talk that you have a disturbance talk acting on your satellite. Yeah, this is and the from yeah, yes, that that's your uncertain parameter, an external disturbance. Uh, and now my question is, mm. from a practical point of view, I think that's not the only uncertain quantity, because for example, uh, this matrix capital J which denotes some uh, inertia tensor here. That's definitely also not perfectly known. Could you comment a little bit on yes, how to identify the uncertain parameters in practice, which kind of measurement to perform in order to end up with suitable parameterizations of D, and maybe how to continue if you yes, have further uncertainties, for example, in this yes, term capital D, or in the capital J, if you have some further uncertainties there in parameters. Uh, you mean uh, when exists some parameter uncertainties? Yeah, how because we I think how, there are... How we, uh, how we uh, reconstruction, uh, re re reconstruct a D or something else? Yes, for example, because I think there are these parameter uncertainties, they are only present. Uh, when uncertain, uncertainty uh, uh, exists in Inertial uh, matrix uh, here is denoted as G. G mm -hmm. is the inertial matrix when when uncertain uh, when uncertainties exist in uh, inertial matrix G. Uh, we can separate it from from this uh, nonlinear term and uh, integrate it into uh, integrate it with D. Uh, so. The integrity not only stands for the external disturbances, uh, but also stands for the um, system uncertainty. Uh, maybe let me try to rephrase your uh, answer. In this case, you would assume that you know the inertia matrix, and uh, yeah. you try to estimate some unknown input. that you try to estimate the D, the small D, as some kind of unknown input variable. Input? Yes, some kind of disturbance input. Yes, uh, D can, um, D is, uh, D is. Uh, yeah, yes, it, it is, I think. It is unknown input. Yeah, okay, that means uh, you could rephrase it as a kind of unknown input observer. Uh, that's right, I think so. Yeah. It's, a, it's a kind of unknown input observer based on the interval observer. Okay. Yes. Maybe anyone else from the audience? Okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, the Pong? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where is your measurement equation? Measurement equation. Yes. Uh, we d uh, we don't consider the measurement equations for this uh for this system. So okay. I don't so I, I don't I don't contain y equals uh c x. I don't I don't I don't have this equation. So in in your study, you uh, assume that the uh, the sigma and uh, omega are all available without measurement noise? Uh, yeah, I 
I have this assumption. Yes, if you uh, have this assumption, uh, please turn to next page. Uh, maybe next one, sorry. And uh, next one. Yes, uh, this one. Uh, since the omega is uh, Merriman is married uh, accurately. You can uh, you can construct the anode input D by directly using the uh, the derivative of omega. Uh, you you mean capital omega ma? Is this one? No no no. Uh, could you please turn to uh. Page three. Page three, okay. Yeah, yes. And you can see this equation 1.2. Here, mm -hmm. if you can estimate omega, uh, the d omega dt dot omega, if you can, you, you use the numerical, uh, numerical derivatives. Mm. Yeah, but I, I think can, I agree with you uh, because if you measure omega perfectly, yes. you can differentiate yes. it. And then yes, you, you, you can use equation 1.2 and resolve it for D. Yes, yes. You can directly estimate uh, dot omega and you can use th this equation to solve D directly. This oh. is my question. So you, you do not use we do not need to use the interval observer. You can use this equation to solve D directly. Mm, actually, your question is uh, is right, and uh, uh, this uh, mm, the construction for the observer or the Lemberger, like the observer is um, in this in this way when uh, omega is available. Mm, is usually used in the set, uh, in the observer design for satellite systems, and uh, the co uh, the the related um, references can be found a lot. I just use the same way like them. Mm. So, what is the advantage of using interval estimation here? Uh, okay, interval estimation here, I. Uh, I summarize three merits here, and and uh, we don't need the we don't use the um, interval re estimation results directly to uh, to reconstruct the disturbance. Uh, in other way, we use this formula to um, to calculate it, and we can notice that this. Uh, this is the boundary, boundary thickness. Uh, di uh, different d minus and uh, d plus will result in different uh, boundary thickness here. However, uh, although different uh, selections for d minus and d plus uh, will result in the almost the same re uh, reconstruction result. Here we can see. Uh, here we can. Uh, here we can conclude that um, the interval estimation result um, doesn't affect the accuracy of the um, reconstruction result. Uh, um, obviously, okay. Uh, I think if you use the Equation in three, three mm -hmm. point calculating uh, this equation. If you use this equation, uh, the estimation D has some error, has some error. Uh, you, you mean this one D has, yes. has, has some slightly differences uh, when compared to the original one? Yes. How to deal uh, with this yeah. problem? Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's indeed a good, good question, and uh, uh, 
um, by uh, by uh, differentiating uh, two equation two point three and uh, and uh, then uh, integrating with two point one and two point two, uh, we we directly come to this formula. We directly come to this formula. We don't contain any. Um, we don't contain any other uh, operations uh, may com which may uh, lead to some uh, tolerance uh, uh, some errors. Uh, the the only um, procedure which may import some differences is here. That's that is one of the drawbacks for our research. And uh, the this different uh, this uh, this difference is is um, usual uh, is uh, caused by the Levent differentiator. Uh, we can is we all know that a differentiator to uh, the Levent differentiator to um, estimate the input signal it does take some times. And uh, when the different uh, Levent differentiator is affected by the measurement noise is uh, the the estimated uh, result is uh, is and the input signal um, always have a slightly um, differences. That's the that's the place where the differences. Yes, is the. Professor Wang, uh, Professor Wang, I can okay. uh, discuss this question with you. The okay. D actually is the actual D. There are no difference between the, uh, this, uh, actually this uh, is actually a solution of actual D uh, from the equa uh, dynamic equa equation through the, uh, through the observer. So this D is, Exactly the actual D. There are no okay. difference. Okay. Okay. It's so, only a solution. But here um, you use the numerical differentiation. You know, numerical differentiation is an EO pos EO pos the problem. So if you have uh, if you consider the measurement noise, um, the problem is complicated uh, yeah it will uh, it, it will it will be very complicated complicated i think so in this what paper uh, we didn't consider the measurement noise measurement noises uh, i have another question in your simulations results uh, do you consider measurement noise or not oh uh, Mm, in this simulation result, we do not take the measurement noises into consideration, and uh, all the signals are cal calculated uh, ideally. Okay, so uh, this is not the real case in real applications. I'm familiar with the uh, satellite and the attitude determination and control. Uh, we have to consider some measurement noise in practical applications. And I think it's even worse in practice because it's not only noise, because what you're measuring there are angular velocities. And usually, usually you're doing this with some gyroscopes and they're certainly also subject to drift effects. Yes. Yes, we have to consider the measurement noise and there are some uh, bias. Yeah. Okay, I will take these um, problems into my future researches. Yeah. Yes, and okay, maybe so, uh, something that is directly connected to this discussion here. If you could go to the block diagram on the slide number six. six. Okay. Uh, you have in the middle this block of a sliding mode controller. And yeah. you said your sliding mode controller contains some integral part. And now uh, my part. yes, and now my yeah. question is: mm -hmm. 
if you have the practically relevant scenario of some sensor bias, could you run into the problem that you end up with some yes, saturation effects that you get in the worst case, even some integrator wind up phenomenon? Uh, saturation, you mean? Uh, yes, saturation because of, for... yes, because of the integrator there. Uh, because when you have some sensor bias or some parameter mismatch, usually you cannot guarantee perfect trajectory tracking. That means the integrator within the controller may start to integrate forever. And I think that's, if you take into account sensor bias in future work, I think that's definitely something that you have to consider that you do not end up with an integrator wind up there. Mm. Because the actuation signal, the parameter tau, the torques uh, generated by some thruster or whatever, uh, they are always finite. And in practice, mm. they have to be limited. And I think uh, in the worst case, you may end up with an integrator wind up there if you have some sensor bias. Uh, pro Professor Rao, uh, the integral uh, terminal sliding mode surface is only set for the outer loop and for inner loop and we just use another kind of sliding mode surface. Uh, okay. Uh, you can you can see see here. Then it boils down to a uh, bias in the feedback of the variable sigma. Yeah, you would have exactly the same phenomenon. Mm. Um, I think that's something that should be handled quite carefully. Yeah. Um, sorry, I don't figure out what to... Uh... If you go back to the block diagram. And if you say you only have the integral part within the yellow box. Uh... Okay, that means if you have some finite error within uh, the difference between sigma desired and the mm -hmm. feedback variable sigma, if there's some bias, you will have the same problem. Okay. That means I, I would say, and I fully agree with my colleague uh, who asked the question before, uh, handling mm -hmm sensor uncertainty, handling measurement noise, or even modeling, uh, let's say, the uncertainty, especially drift effects of sensors, is something that is really crucial here. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have any further questions from the audience? Yes, I still have two questions on my list. Okay. Um, maybe we go to the slide number 12. Number two. There's one parameter that, uh, that you didn't explain. Which one? Uh, the K3. You have this uh, expression here uh, for the chi dot. And you have a K3 in the denominator. K3? Yes, uh, in the last formula. On this one? Yeah, you're dividing by the norm of SB square plus K3. Yeah. Is um, this some kind of uh, chattering reduction parameter, some regularization parameter? What is the main meaning of K3? K3, uh, which, which yeah, term? Exactly in this line where, where your mouse has been. Here. Uh, here, here. Is, is this a measure against chattering? Uh, no, it's just to avoid the singularity problem. Uh, K3 I, is a, a small positive uh, scalars. Yes, you're avoiding a singularity there, but I assume it can be used to prevent some kind of chattering here. Mm. Uh, let me see. Uh, 
catering. Yes, no, we can reduce the catering. Hmm? Maybe it can reduce the, the chattering. Yes, I think so. Be, be, yeah. be, because close to the singularity, you get rapid switchings between uh, these these two lines here, yeah. the first and second line in the formula, and introducing a, a sufficiently small K3, positive K3, I think reduces the likelihood of switchings between uh, different signs of chi. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, anyone else have problem? Uh, okay, uh, my name is Li uh, Tao. I have a question on this page. Uh, I see uh, here you have here the matrix D. Uh, you have to do. Um, Consider inverse. Uh, consider inverse uh, to this question. So I want to know if uh, there are uh, some wrong assumption to the matrix D. Uh, matrix D is, uh, is um, denoted as the um, distribution matrix. And uh, in our research, I use the three order identity matrix for this. So, um, so the procedural inverse is valid. And uh, for the real application, the pseudo inverse for D is also valid. So and it, this, this is this is uh, related to the um, to the um, configuration of the, the actuator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it it relates to the construction of the real physical um per, uh, peripherals. So the procedural inverse for D always exists. Uh, I'm not really sure about this because D is the control input matrix. And I yeah. think that pseudo inverse is only, uh, yes, or is only well-defined in the case that you don't have redundant actuators. Because uh, if you yeah. have some redundant actuators, you may have lines or columns in the matrix D that are linear dependent. And then the pseudo inverse is not really well defined. Yes, if you have redundant uh, thrusters, for example, that you can distribute the control input uh, via different channels. I would say what is relevant there is that the matrix D has full column rank. Yeah. And if you have redundancies, this is not the case. Hmm. Oh, okay, this is my question. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Zhao Pang. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah I, I'm Chen Aijun. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, for the inner loop, what, what, what is the sampling time is uh, se selected? How, how long is the sampling for, time? For the, inner, for the inner loop, you want to know yes. the uh, settling time. Sampling time, yes. In your sampling simulation, time. yeah, sampling time. Sampling. How how long? I I, I know sampling time. Yeah. Yeah. In, in your simulation. Uh, in my simulation, I I, I can I check my simulation right now.
I think until we wait uh, for the uh, response from the simulation file, I think the sampling time is not really critical here as long as there's no measurement noise. Yes. In the case that you have measurement noise, then it becomes critical. Because when we look at uh, the graphs that we had seen at the end, everything was very smooth there. And if you use something, let's say one millisecond or whatever, I think it's really not critical. Yes, here. Okay. Oh, please, the one. The, the summary time for the simulation is set, set like this way. Uh, I can I can share my simulation code with you. Do you still have question with my simulation? No, I think that's not necessary. Okay. I think the question was directed into the way uh, how large does the sampling time have to be in order to avoid, for example, ugly chattering effects. And I think this, at least from my perspective, it must be some kind of trade-off between the size of this parameter K6 where this multiplied with the sine function. Mm. And mm. if you have additional uh, sensor noise, some stochastic noise that may be present, then you have to tune uh, the parameter for the sampling time quite carefully. Okay, we have a question in our chat. Okay, I will see. Okay, maybe do you want to ask the question yourself or should I read it? Okay, I'll, I'll read it. Okay, I'll read it. The upper and lower bounds of D may affect the control performance. So how do you determine the upper and lower bounds of D? Affect the control performance? It doesn't affect the control performance. Is there at least affect the accuracy? I think that's just what I had shown. And how to end up with a suitable parameterization for D, I think is the question. Uh, so how do you determine the upper and the lower? Okay. Uh, as I stated, uh, stated before, different, uh, uh, different selections for D minus and D plus will result in almost the same result. And, um, we use the reconstructed uh, disturbance D into the controller design. So we, in, uh, for the um, control performance, uh, we don't use D minus or D plus. So th this doesn't affect the control accuracy or stability. So uh, that's, that's my response. No, I'm a little bit confused. Okay. Uh, uh, is is the parameter that is going into your controller, is it a point valued estimate for D or is it an interval? Uh, in controller, we use the reconstructed uh, D. Uh, and we, you, in controller, we use the, 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 this result to stand for the influence of the external disturbance. We use this one. Okay, this is more or less some selecting a value from the interval, a point value. And uh, just uh, just revealed in the simulation, we noted that a different d minus and d plus d is almost the same one. So uh, we don't. So it it also is a merit of this algorithm. Uh, we we can select uh, D minus and D plus just to uh, just to um, just to construct a, a just to construct a successful interval estimation. That's okay. The M for D minus and D plus is to construct the interval estimation. Nothing more. Okay, are there any further questions?
Um, maybe I have a question concerning an outlook. Uh, because oh. what you, an outlook for future work, because what you assumed is that you can measure all state variables. Uh, th th this page? Yes, you're measuring all components of the uh, angular velocity vector omega. Uh, yeah, I, I need to know the exact. Uh, yes, and an right. outlook for future work could be to find a minimum configuration a minimum number of sensors or minimum number of angular velocity components that are required in order to reconstruct still the disturbance perfectly or appropriately. Uh, Could be directed into uh, the direction of robust observability analysis. Mm. I think we have someone here in the audience who is an expert on this. Thomas Paradowski is still here. No, I think he isn't. Mm. No, because uh, one of uh, the colleagues from Wuppertal, uh, he wrote about uh, it was a similar problem of his observability analysis of uh, uncertain systems in his PhD thesis. And this will be subject of one of the upcoming meetings. Okay, does anyone else have a question? Or comment or remark? I have some more uh, comments on the uh, on the selection of the D uh, the, the boundary of the D, that is the D plus and D minus. Uh, actually, the question, the upper and lower boundaries of, of uh, D uh, uh, doesn't affect the control performance because we, uh, the selection of D and D minus uh, will produce the almost uh, produced uh, exactly D. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference selection produced the same D. And uh, the D, the estimation D, and then introduced to the controller. So the difference selection of D plus and D minus uh, will not affect the performance of the controller. This is all. Uh, this is my comment, comments of this question. Uh, maybe coming back to your answer or to your comment, do the, those bounds have to be somehow symmetric? This D minus and D plus? Sorry, pardon? Uh, does it have an influence if the bounds D minus and D plus were not symmetric? Because in the simulation, we had identical absolute values for the lower and upper bounds of the disturbance. Yeah, we, we show this in the simulation. We have two cases, two cases uh, with different selection of the uh, boundaries of the D. And uh, uh, from the simulation, we, we are see that the uh, reconstruction of the D is almost the same. And then the deconstruction of D is introduced to the controller because uh, different selection of D, the boundaries of D produce the same uh, reconstruction of D. So uh, in my opinion, the different selections of D, D plus and D minus will not affect the performance of the controller. And uh, the sim simulation results uh, have already show shown this. Okay, any further questions? So the, sel the selection of the boundary of the D is very relaxed. Okay. Uh, 